mixing and joining and unity took place in spite of ourselves, in a sense, right. that at one point you say jazz was integrated before baseball, and you talk about the, something like exuberant hybridity of music, right. and so this is a, a different story of who we are. It's a story of our being together rather than our being apart. Is that a fair Yeah, and also summary? how for real it is, because I grew up in the, in, the, in the kind of height of nationalism. I had a post of Malcolm over my bed, I was for real about it. And I used to see, go to the barbershop and see my daddy always arguing against nationalism in the period that we had our Afros, everybody. And we leave the, the shop and be, man, why are you always embarrassing us, talking against brothers and all this stuff you're doing, white folks, man? And my daddy would say, man, you always attack the people in front of you. You don't talk about people who are not there. If you have an issue, you want to get something straight in your world, start with your world. Still from Kenner, Louisiana, I, got, I retain a kind of country feeling about everything. And um, then we, we, we made it happen. It was uh, scheduled and I wanted to take it really, really serious, seriously because my father is a teacher and I always grew up with teachers and I took any type of education very seriously and my mama too was uh, so every, everything I felt it would be an opportunity for me to talk about jazz and the musicians and all the great things I had learned uh, and continue to learn. Your very last words of the very last lecture were, this music cost us a lot. Not knowing what it means cost us a lot more. And when I went back and read that after having heard all the lectures and then going back to it, I thought maybe that's a clue to what you wanted to accomplish, that not knowing what it means cost us more. Well, I think, yes, what we're all involved in, like when I, when I read your book and you said that all of the aspirations that were in the body of a nine-year-old or a ten-year-old, I forget the exact age, even though I wrote about slavery and I had read about it in term papers in my entire life, I was fascinated with it. Just that observation that you made, that this is what the body of this person represented. And uh, I think that the, the value of education and of knowledge is that we become aware of more things and we're able to become more powerful in the decisions that we make and we have a, a, a broader overview and we also can focus in more specifically on things. So yeah, it cost us not knowing about our music has really cost us because our music has been like a warhead. It's, our music has been like a missile upon which a warhead of profanity and ignorance and misogyny and uh, division of generations, division of sexes, division of races, it's been, it's been launched on this missile and it's been filtered through music. And I've been fighting against this really since I was in high school. It's a long uphill losing battle the entire way because you also have a relationship with those things that you don't like, you like them also. So you're fighting with yourself also. And above all, you like to be a part of the group. So it's hard to go against your entire group. And any chance I get to represent the, the core fundamentals of our values, I'm so unbelievably serious about it. It don't mean I'm against people partying or getting high or having a good time. It just means that the type of ignorance that comes through our music is so beneath the music itself and we're so addicted to it that we can't see it. It's like you get really, really overweight and you don't really notice it until you walk past a mirror one day on the wrong angle and you start. <laughs> and then you say, oh, you know, I don't like those pictures of me because I don't look like myself. Um, it just takes some things sometimes to make you say, hey, I need to lose weight. And groups of people are that way too. And, and as Americans, we're waiting still for that opportunity to understand how far we're lost in terms of our identity and how much of it is connected to our music. I, I, I appreciated the opportunity, especially as something connected with you because of the depth of respect I have for your perspective. Um, and I'm, I'm just saying what's real. It's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna get a job at Harvard. I'm saying what's real. I'm just, I'm just being for real about it. It's, it but it's, it's important to express respect in public. It's Thank important you. to do that and to be for real about it. Thank you, Wendy. Because if not, people don't believe in anything. They think everything is just all oh, they hooked this up or it's a deal or something. This is not a deal. Uh, it came up, up on the pages of your book, and it's important to be, res to be respectful. And uh, it, was, it was partially for that feeling of respect. I wanted you 
to listen to it and say, you did something. And uh, I always say that to people when their mothers or fathers come to hear them at a concert. When your mom or daddy comes to a concert, believe me, I don't care how cool somebody is, they want to let them know you did not waste your money on these lessons. And you didn't waste your time sitting up here. I'm trying to play. So I... Well, let's just start with the basic. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs>